Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to what's known with Windows Whistler Build 2276. As you may have noticed straight off, as you can see they've got to grips with the theme now. And even though I've uncommented everything, it actually works. For the most part, it's gone back to working. So you can see they've got the, the brown text and the full highlight that's in the light blue colour. One thing they haven't done, well one thing they've removed, is the fancy new start button. It's just the bog standard old start button now so they've got rid of that for some reason but yeah you can see the tooltips are actually back to working now in their thick edged boxes with their grey text and as you probably saw at the start there the balloon which was just melting into the background that's also been fixed so everything has gone back to being nice and working another thing which has sort of changed where it's not related with a the theme but sort of is, is this web view thing here. It's gone from being the darker blue colour, which we've seen in all the previous builds, well most of the previous builds, and now it's this lighter blue colour which will remain for quite a while. Now you may have noticed then when I just clicked on the bits, it's not actually present in all the folders, it just seems to be on the first folder, the my computer root folder thing, and it doesn't apply to any others not even in the privileged areas or anything and that's because now introducing this build is a registry entry to enable it for most of the other folders it's off by default but if you go to regedit obviously and then go to when I find it in my notes it's I don't know where it is, it's somewhere down it. It's, there we go, it's Software Microsoft Windows Explorer Web View. I should have been able to figure that out. Right, and what you have to do is add an entry in here called New View, and that defaults to, well, this key's not there by default, so you have to create it, and then create a new view value and set that to 1. And then what happens now is you get this new view, web view, thing view on all the folders. Well, not quite all the folders, it doesn't do it on the drive routes because these use the other web view type thing there, not the classic one. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's somewhere in here. It's in web. Where's web? There it is. See, because normal folders use this. Where's it gone? The web, the, well, the web view one. And I think the drive ones use one called. Let's see if it's default, which is that one. Or standard. It's one of them two. And obviously that one hasn't. They haven't been changed to include this bit. So they don't include that bit. So that's why that's not there. But yeah, that's the new view. Also new from a look and feel perspective is the addition of more desktop background pictures. Now these aren't new new because these were ones which were included in Windows ME so they've just been imported into here. So there's the Yosemite one and Solar Eclipse, Snow Trees, Smoky Light and the infamous Shed in Field. So yeah, there's the new background pictures from Windows ME. The old standbys are still here though, like the athlete getting ready to run his 100 meters or whatever he's doing. Obviously by yourself because there's nobody next to him. So yeah, some of the pictures from Windows ME have been imported into here and they'll be removed before we get to, I think, the release candidate. I think they're removed by. But anyway, they'll be removed soon. A third look and feel change, which looks like a bug on the surface and that's because it kind of is but it's really because of a meshing between two different technologies is the hiding of the desktop icons. Now you might think how the hell can you bugger that up since it's been in Windows since like forever? Well they somehow managed to. 
On the face of it, it works just fine. If you turn them off, they disappear. And if you turn them back on, they reappear. But what doesn't happen is if you turn them off and then log off. Now in previous builds, these should have persisted, so they should not be on when you log back in again. And as you can see, they're not disappeared, they're still there. And if you go to the option, it's not checked, so they shouldn't be there. Now like I said, this is because of a meshing between two different uh, features in Explorer. Obviously the hiding of the desktop, desktop icons is one, but something new is another one. And if we open Regmon and include hide desktop icons, then we can see this in action if we refresh the desktop then they've disappeared now because it, um, I don't know why but it, it looked at the setting or something so they've now disappeared but you can see here under hide desktop icons there's a new thing that it's querying because this is a new key altogether so it looks for hide desktop icons and then there's one a key for whichever start menu you're actually using at the time so since I've got the new start menu on it's new start panel it's under but if I turn it to well, if I change start menus then it'll say a classic start menu and what these GUIDs are that it queries for are which icons to disable and as you can see here it's disabled this one that starts 45OD and this one that starts 2ODO now these are GUIDs of shell folders so if for example I go to this one here, the 2ODO41, which is that one, and run it, then I get to my computer. So that's the my computer icon to disable, and it's got a value of 1 by default. So that's not there, and if I turn it back on, you'll see that that's actually not there. Likewise with this 208D one, I think that's my network places, that's also not there. And one of them will be Internet Explorer, that's also not there, so that's gone as well. So yeah, you can also set it to, well these are all in HKey local machine, which means they're there by default, you can also put it in HKey current user and create it yourself, so you can do it on a per user basis instead of on a per machine basis. But yeah, if we go down here, the one which actually hides all the major icons is the null GUID that disables everything except for the recycle bin because that's uh, another shell folder. So if we had that entry in there it disable all the icons. Like I said I don't know why they've why it doesn't query the actual um, desktop icon setting on startup and just queries these ones because it queries these on startup without you having to refresh it to make them reappear. But that is why because it looks on here for these so if I for example go to where's Reggie? there we go and go to where we should go to it's key current user software Microsoft Windows current version Explorer and then I create hide how's that happened hide desktop icons and then delete the rest of it now if I create a D word value with all those numbers in it, now they should disappear. Yeah, there you go, they've all disappeared now, leaving only a lonely recycle bin. So yeah, that's new for this build, the method of hiding desktop icons. Like I said, I don't know why it doesn't query the actual state of, the, of this setting on startup, but it doesn't, so they don't persist over reboots if you turn them on off. Just an addendum to show you that it really is uh, triggered by the different start menus. If I switch to classic, they'll come flying back again. Now none are hidden in this one, so we've got all the actual deleted icons which shouldn't be there. My documents, my computer, my network places and Internet Explorer. I think Windows Media Player as well, I think that's one that doesn't do that show up, I can't remember.
So if you want to disable them, obviously just set the value to zero. And they will appear. Oh yeah, Windows Media Player was there. I diffed the in files for this build. Well, it's what I do for every build, but I really haven't found anything interesting so far. But I did in this build in biosinfo.inf. Now if you look at that, all these yellow things is what have been added from this version, and the red things of what were in the previous version. You can see the version number updated, but it's this thing here that's the the thing that's making me go, hmm, what the hell's that? It's this legacy Geezerville interface. Now apart from sounding like a place for old people, apparently Geezerville is a place in California. But what this has got to do with BIOS interfaces, I have like no idea at all. And if I search for it on the internet, I literally can't find anything about it apart from people who've posted the infs online for some reason. As you can see here, the only one that's close is user interface design meetups near Geezerville. But obviously that's nothing to do with it, so this one's just one of them spam things that you click on and serves your ad. I don't actually have any information about it, so that's not about it. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the hell that's about. But apparently it exists all the way up to XP, I think. So yeah, that's just an interesting little thing that I don't know what it's about. It's obviously something to do with the BIOS, because it's in BIOS info.inf. And it's to do with oldish computers. So yeah, I'm not sure what that's about, but as you can see it only goes down to there, so there's only a few of them. So yeah, hmm, interesting. One little update I saw in this version, which I don't think was in the previous version, or if I did I don't think I mentioned it, is that if you put the mouse next to the start button, not on it, but next to it, and then click, it sort of knows that you want to click the start button, so it moves the mouse onto it and activates it. So look, if you're on there, it's not highlighted in blue, so I'm not over it, but if I click on it, it moves the mouse to the right slightly, and then it opens the start menu. So yeah, that's just one little update that I thought was a bit nifty to stop you missing it if you go too far to the right, left even. Speaking of the start menu, you may have noticed just then that when I actually did that, it doesn't actually animate anymore like it did in the last version. And it also got your username down here where it didn't in the last version. So yeah, you can re-enable the animation though and you don't have to even go into the registry. And it's actually one of the properties. If you go to advanced, then you can animate the menu as it opens. And that does exactly what it says. These other ones, even if you enable them, they don't do anything, so there's no point enabling them or showing them because they don't actually do anything. So maybe in the next build. And there you go, you get the nice animated stat menu back. One thing we've seen mention of in previous builds but haven't actually seen working is autoplay. Now that is obviously when you insert a CD and you get the thing that says what do you want to do with the stuff on the CD and we've seen obviously the properties of the CD drive where you can select because it's now working again so we've seen that but we haven't actually seen it working and I've been trying you know obviously I showed you it because it doesn't work but I've been trying and it, this is the first time it's actually worked so if I pop in a CD with some music on it there you go and it's got mixed content because there's some audio files that it doesn't recognize on the disc so and I think there's some images as well yeah so you can now select what you want to do you can open it as a folder or you can actually click one of these options in here so you can play the music files or not so if I open it up and you can see it works just fine yeah you see it's got the thumbs.db and the, the album art on there so that's why it reporting mixed content this is just main sources album which I can't quite remember the name of right now <laughs> but yeah so that works and if you obviously select the other option to play then that is precisely what it will do so if I click on it and then OK and there we go it starts playing. You might not be able to hear this because I don't know if I'm recording the speakers but that's enough I don't want to get content blocked on YouTube 
So that's that working now. Another thing that's been there but not quite working is in the control panel and it's not on that page, it's on the classic view. And that's speech. Now you may have noticed before we had this thing where you could train it, the the buttons where you could train it and all these other stuff. But now you can actually select oh no actually it was like this last time wasn't it? So it's been a long time since that video. But yeah, it was like this last time, except it didn't actually work, but now... And it works. So yeah, there's some properties you can set. You can... Whether it uses the comma or the full stop, it's not a period, full stop, as a decimal point separator thing, and the date type. I'm not sure why it doesn't set these from the regional settings, but it doesn't, so... Also you can select which audio it goes out to, and that's pretty much it. One welcome change from the last build is this. There you go, you see it opens now in about 3 seconds rather than 3 minutes. And it's still exactly, pretty much exactly the same. Most of it, most of it actually does work now, including the interactive support. So you can now actually send remote control invitation assistance thingy, my bobs. And obviously you go through these and then you can send... have an email address to send to. Oh, I gotta get this thing. It's set up as American keyboards and I'm not American. So there you go, when you've filled that out, you click next then you can set a password and when it expires and then you have to select which IP you want to use because this has two NICs in it so I need the local subnet one and then you need to have set up Outlook Express so that you can actually send the email which I've already done and there you go that's sent the email and what does the email look like? Well, by the magic of already having it open, it looks like this, eventually. Yep, you see you get the request for remote assistance, request sent by your username, it's got a call on after it for some reason, I don't know why. And uh, when it expires, and the message, and then all, there's actually more instructions than there is of anything else. And it tells you you must click the attached file, because it attaches this rcbuddy.msrc incident. Now, I couldn't get this to work with XP, so I don't know if it's only meant to work on this build or if they like change the format of the file in between but I can't get XP to connect to this computer even if I set the actual oh not that start menu the other one even if you go to remote and tick this box I think it's off by default if you check that box, I can't even, I still can't get it to connect, so I don't know what's going on there. And I can't get XP to generate one to try it going from 2276 to XP, so I still have to try it when I install the next build and then see if I can get them to work like that. So I can't show you how it actually works, I can show you how it tries to connect. I think I've got, no I deleted that didn't I? Hang on a minute. So there you go, now downloaded that. And it's in here. And it's in here somewhere. MSRC, but there you go, it's the one without the icon. Just hiding away there. And if you click on it, you get this. The remote control invitation from Bob when it expires. And the password that you have to enter if you actually have a password, which you don't, so you can't type in it. And then you click yes. And then this happens. Now this always hangs here, so I can't actually show you it working. I think it's because it's actually the same computer that it's on, and I, I think that makes a difference. So yeah, it's not actually working, so I can't show you it working, but I will try it in the next build to see if it works. But yeah, it's an improvement of the last build. Oh, if you click cancel, you get this, which is kind of useless. But it's just that bit of it, so you can't actually go looking into the contents on the left or anything, so, yep. But the help opens quite quickly this time, so that's a, a good thing. Yep, you can also report a bug as usual and get Microsoft support 
which well you could do but that doesn't work oh there you go eventually it does work and it launches support.microsoft so yeah it's quite a bit better in this version there is also something else there's a tour you can take for internet explorer which is in here somewhere where is it um, take the Internet Explorer tour and fortunately as you can see it uses something on Microsoft site and since this is using IE 5.5 6 I don't know then it goes to the redirects to the upgrade your browser page so unfortunately you can't take the Internet Explorer tour anymore which is a shame I should actually see where it's going to shouldn't I hang on a minute and as if by magic this is what I would have shown it's Microsoft.com slash Windows slash IE slash IE5 slash Tor and as you can see it's got the pretty much the ME branding and you can hopefully look through this this is going through archive obviously so you can select bits of it oh, whatever's meant to be in the middle here obviously hasn't been saved so it's not actually that interesting right now Yeah. So we'll stop there since there's not much interesting on this because it's all been pretty much gutted, all the interesting pages. And I think that's just going to about do it for part one. Come and join me in part two where we'll continue searching around for little changes and updates and bugs and pretty much anything else we can find. <laughs>